Question number four, uh, this one's going to take a little bit of calculation. Question number four, the framing plan shown is for a two-story simple light manufacturing building. If the loads are as follows, axial loads only, uh, live load of the second floor is 80 uh, PSF, dead load of the second floor is 20 PSF, live load of the, of the roof is 30 PSF, dead load of the roof is, again, 20 PSF, and then we're going to ignore that first floor slab on grade uh, just because it's sort of being held up by the... By the uh, ground below. Uh, so we have two basic questions here. The first one is what is the total load uh, of the column that's been indicated? So what's the first thing we need to figure out? Well, the first thing that you need to know is that there are all these loads. So we're going to add those up in just a moment. But the big thing to understand is what, how, how does the load even get to the column? So the big key word is tributary area here. Tributary area. Yep. Yeah, it's a key word. And it'll show up somewhere. Yeah. So basically, we are going to have half of the bay in each direction. And I'm just going to draw a square here for you. That this is basically the trib area that that column is going to see. So basically, half of the 25-foot bay in each direction and half of the 30-foot bay in each direction is going to contribute to the load that goes down that column. So we know that the area, I'm just going to keep it easy for you, is the 25 and the 30, and we're going to multiply it by our load, and I'm going to do some addition in my head. So 80 and 20, that's 100, and another 50, so that's 150. So you could do this where you actually did the second floor load and then did another one for the roof load and then you added them together. Uh, what Heather's doing is just sort of putting it all into one yeah. uh, one thing and Since saying just so wanted it's, the load at the bottom, I it's, so did it's, a little shortcut. If you add them all up and multiply that by the area, that's going to be the 100, 150 yep. PSF. So right now, if you notice, though, uh, you want your answer in kips. And right now, all of my units are in pounds. So you will have to divide uh, for those that maybe aren't as aware you have a thousand pounds in one kip so we will have to divide this whole thing by a thousand but our final answer here is 112.5 kips is what comes down that column and this is one of those things that you have to definitely be uh, watchful for because while they're not generally trying to go out of their way to confuse you or or be mean about it um, there often are answers that if you didn't notice the word kip uh, in that, that there would be a version that would be very close in pounds. And so it's kind of, you know, taunting you to choose the pounds one, even though it says kips. You have to be really careful about uh, matching kips and pounds, matching feet and inches, matching, uh, you know, all of those kinds of issues show up all the time yeah, on this. Units, so units like are a huge deal. Um, so. Uh, so the answer is, uh, the first part of the answer is 112.5 kips, but then that leads us to the second question, which is, if the soil below that column is capable, capable of 4,000 PSF, what is the size of the footing? So that means uh, the 4,000 PSF is re referring to the soil capacity. Right. Like, like uh, if you put a load on that's more than 4,000 pounds per square foot, presumably it would start to uh, settle or, or some problem would start to happen. So uh, how can we make sure we're being safe? What kind of uh, area do we need to have, be able to handle that? Right. Uh, that load. So when you're figuring out the area of anything and you have a pressure, so we basically know that a pressure equals a force over an area. So we know P and we know that pressure and we're going to search for A. So by rearranging this equation, we're going to take the load and divide it by the pressure. So I wrote out the load up here in pounds so that you can see what we're going to get for an answer up here. And I wrote out the units longhand so that you can see how when we do the the math that you're going to get an answer in feet squared when you do this math it ends up being 28.1 square feet so there's an interesting question now our answers are uh, four times seven feet four feet times seven feet which is 28 square feet mm -hmm. that's pretty darn close but there's two problems with that uh problem number one is well, it's 28, it's not 28.1. So you actually are a little bit less than right. what the requirement was. What's the other problem with uh, four times seven? 
Well, it's rectangular, which you can do. Um, which there you, might be a reason why you would have mm-hmm. to do it. But since it doesn't tell us anything about like we're up against a property line or right. something, like why would you want to do that, right? Nope. So the the fact that it's not symmetrical, it's going to be you you. It would be harder to get the rebar in there to figure out how to make that work to spread yep. it out. It's, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, but the twenty nine C twenty nine square feet that sure looks pretty good because that's just bigger than the twenty eight point one. So that's really the answer. Mm-hmm. Uh, some folks may have seen a different uh, different possible answer. So. Tell you what, let's take a look at uh, what our submitted one said. Yeah, let's see what they liked. So uh, on this answer, they chose six by six, which is an interesting answer because like that's often on the exam, there will be more than one correct answer. And in my mind, I think the six by six is a correct answer. It's just not as correct as the 29 square feet answer. And the reason I would say that is that you know, anybody who's actually done concrete work knows that, you know, if you start giving people an answer like, yeah, the footing should be, uh, you know, five foot two and five eighths yeah, inches. Yeah, they don't build to that. They just don't build to that. It's just not how concrete works. Uh, and so generally you're going to round up and you're going to round up to maybe a six inch line mm-hmm. or maybe a foot line, something like that. Um, maybe, you know, if you're being a little more tight and controlled, maybe it's to every two inches or something. But like a six inch thing would be sort of uh, fairly typical. Um, so I could imagine that if uh, if our answer is really 28.1 square feet and then you start thinking, well, how big is that? And like if we did uh, five by five, is that big enough? Well, no, that's 25 square feet. So right. it's not five by five. It's the next one. It's six by six. So it's a reasonable answer, but it's just a little too wasteful in the context of the exam. If it had said five foot six by five foot six, then I'd, it'd be a, a closer mm-hmm. bet. Right. And I think that might be a reasonable answer. I think the six by six is just a little too far off. But you can see uh, why uh, why they answered it this way. Yep. And, you know, looking at D as an answer, you could, it's the math. It just has oh, a right. unit issue. In it's it, just, so. a, just a unit issue, mm-hmm. right? Because that's, yep. uh, yeah, exactly. That's, a, that's one there to just to taunt you to do it wrong. 